I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Penny, and I'm a chef at the Institute of Culinary Education. I've been a chef for 16 years. Today, I'm gonna to be making a regular old vanilla cake with sprinkles in it. I'm going to be making a chocolate cake with peanut butter frosting, which is really kind of a traditional birthday cake in my family. The birthday cake that I'm gonna to make today is gonna to be a light, luscious white cake soaked in Saint Germain. The cake is going to have sprinkles on the inside of it, and on top, it's gonna to have beautiful piped buttercream flowers. This cake is gonna blow your mind. Normally, I would use a box mix. They're good, but I hear it's a very special day. It is Epicurious's birthday. So I'm making one from scratch. If you're gonna have a birthday cake, like, you know, you, got, you just gotta go for it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix together my dry ingredients, flour, baking powder, and salt. I'm gonna be using a traditional creaming method, what I would call the basic cake baking method. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my dry ingredients into my mixer. I'm gonna start with my sugar, sugar cocoa powder, baking soda, cake flour, and all-purpose flour. And this mix gives me a combination between a stable cake that has some body and also that has lightness. Salt. You always need some salt. Sweet things with a little salt taste better. Always salt. Almost forgot. Baking, baking powder. powder. Powdered peanut butter. This kind of gives you the flavors that you want without having to worry about dealing with the texture of regular peanut butter. And then my all-purpose flour. Okay, so now everything's mixed together. I'm going to add my butter. So the next thing I'm gonna do is combine my butter and sugar. Oh, this is a fancy one. Look at those settings. Nope, nope, that's the way that you, okay, cool. Got it, we're good, we're good. Sugar. I think some people go for a really long time with the mixer, but I don't know why, so I don't. Mm, it already smells good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move into my wet ingredients. And the first step to that is egg whites. So I'm gonna crack my eggs on the counter, or never on the side of the bowl, because it's not splintering the shell as much. I would love to tell you what the secret to not getting shell is uh, in, but I feel like if I say out loud anything about how to not get shell in, I will immediately get shell in. I'm gonna just go ahead and whisk these first, and then that way I don't have to worry about doing that with everything else trying to get in. I'm gonna put a glove on, and then very gently I'm gonna go in, I pinch with my fingers underneath, and drop those into a bowl to make a delicious custard or something else with later. That's egg number one. Now, egg number two. My whole milk, my egg whites, vanilla bean paste. I prefer to use vanilla bean paste. I find that it just has a much stronger vanilla flavor when I'm choosing between extracts and pastes. The next thing I'm gonna do is add my vanilla into my milk. Boop, that's all. So I have my vegetable oil, that's gonna make it nice and moist. And then my buttermilk, which is the key ingredient here because the buttermilk is what really gives it that richness and that moisture. I'm gonna alternate adding my flour mixture and my milk mixture. And I'm gonna start slow so I don't wear all the flour. And you just have to kind of work with it and ease things in. I'm just reading the internet and doing what I'm told. And I'm gonna mix this until I don't see the butter anymore. When I add the milk, I like to turn it on to stir and I like to stream it down the side of the bowl. And I would describe that as a batter made. Now I have my hot water and I'm gonna pour it in really slowly because I don't want it to accidentally cook the eggs that I have in here. Slowly start to add my wet ingredients in. My batter is made except I need my sprinkles. So I'm just gonna gently fold these in because if I beat these in, this will just be a, a brown mess instead of a beautiful rainbow of cake. This is looking really smooth and that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm um, not looking for anything specific in terms of the look of the batter. It's really more just letting it go for two solid minutes after the addition of each section of the milk. Okay, so I like to bake my cake in individual layers. When you bake it in thinner layers, you just get a better bake because it doesn't spend as long in the oven, so it doesn't dry out as much. It might not seem even, but it's a superpower. It's even. One of the most crucial steps, I think, in baking a cake is making sure you can get it out of the cake pan. I'm also going to add some cocoa powder, and then that will also help to get the cake out once it's baked. I have a greased and a parchment papered pan, and I'm gonna put my batter right in there. Just kind of work it 
towards the edges evenly. I think the main goal is just making sure that they're even and you do have enough room for them to grow. Even it out with a spatula, and then I might give it like a little shake. I kind of like to give them a little tap tap. The corners are kind of hard to spatula into. Yeah, you can be as aggressive as you want. Cake levels itself. I'm gonna go bake it in the oven at 350 degrees standard oven for like 35 to 40 minutes. My cake is in the oven, so I'm gonna start working on my frosting. I'm gonna be making a traditional American buttercream and I'm gonna be making it pink. Today I'm making a Swiss meringue buttercream. It's going to be a little bit less sweet than your traditional buttercream, which is going to pair beautifully with the chocolatey savoriness of the cake. My buttercream is a royal icing that has butter added to it. I'm not 100% sure what royal icing is, but it does sound pretty fancy. Royal icing is something you might traditionally see on decorated cookies. It'll dry firm and it'll be something that will last a really long time, but when we add butter to it, we turn it into an icing that doesn't have any of the grittiness that American buttercream traditionally has. I have my butter at room temperature, so it'll be nice and easy to cream. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my salt and vanilla and cream these things together. <laughs> So what I'm going to do next is create a double boiler. I'm going to make sure I'm controlling the temperature that the sugar is melting and combining with the egg whites. I'm gonna start by adding my powdered sugar, yeah. egg whites. Ooh. And I'm also gonna add my salt at this point. The salt is for flavor for sure, but it's also to help me break up the proteins in the eggs and to get them going. Having the, the brown sugar as opposed to just a traditional white sugar is going to give me a little bit more of that depth of flavor that I'm looking for. And again, this is made with love, so if it's not perfect, I'll just, you know, that's what happens. But also, food with threats usually works out too. You will be delicious. So I'm just gonna let this go, and it's gonna take a while. You're gonna feel like this is not happening, and it's never gonna happen, and I promise you, it will. Basically, we're making a meringue right now, and we're gonna start off kind of slow and then we're gonna go ahead and get it going. The next thing I'm gonna do is start adding in my sugar a little bit at a time. Uh, and this is icing sugar, powdered sugar. I like this speed. We're gonna keep it, we're gonna cruise. So you know you're starting to get close with the royal when you start to see it kind of holding its shape around the exterior of the bowl. Okay, let's see where we're at. So see how this is being held up? It's being suspended into the air. Now I'm gonna start adding a lot of butter. And while this is mixing, I can go ahead and add my vanilla bean paste. Just saying, you can add a little bit of booze to this too, wouldn't be a terrible thing. Just a little splash of milk. All right, I think this is pretty much ready, except I need to add a couple drops of my food coloring. Gotta make it pink, so that Epicurious will know I care. We wanted a little bit more of this texture so that it's nice for piping. Buttercream is done. So what I'm gonna do is take half of this buttercream and set that aside. I'm gonna have chocolate buttercream on the inside and vanilla on the outside for the aesthetics. Time to put in the rest of my ingredients, which is going to be my powdered peanut butter, my vanilla, and my salt. And all I'm doing is just mixing this together till it's good. So my buttercream is ready. This looks done. And now I have this really beautiful frosting that has this nice meringue base. All right, I declare that pink buttercream. All right, so now it's time to assemble my cake and my cakes turned out beautifully. This is always, to me, the most difficult phase of cake baking. Uh, do I just turn it over? I might just turn it over. If you think it'll just come out if I... I was going for more of a rounded square anyway. If I have everything ready to go, the first thing that I'm gonna do is mix up my soak for the cake. And for that, I'm gonna use simple syrup and Saint Germain. Elderflower liqueur, it's very floral. Come on. I have a good feeling. Ah! By baking the cakes my way, they're very even. We don't have to trim off excess cake and it just bakes really evenly, nice and fluffy. Basically, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and trim off this bubble layer where it kind of rose up because I want them to be nice and even layers. Gorgeous, look at that. So my cake is a surprise inside cake, which means that when you cut into it, you get an explosion of something. And in this case, it's our really pretty fancy golden sprinkles. I have four layers of cake, one of which will not be um, tampered with at all, but the other three are gonna have a hole punched out of the center. Gently, gently. 
Ta-da! Look at that. It's like I've done it before. Okay, you pink buttercream, let's go. So, technique might be like a strong word for how I frost things. It's more of um, a dump and spread. I'm gonna just get a nice big dollop of this, put it in the middle. I'm gonna just go ahead and start working it toward the edges. One cake layer goes down, turn it upside down. I always turn it upside down because this part of the cake was the part that was in touch with the parchment. It's always even, it's always flat, and it's got the more porous texture. Cold cake, warm syrup. If the syrup and the cake are both cold, it's not going to sink in. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my frosting and start just applying it to the outside. I'm going to make my, what's called a crumb coat. I like the idea of it being a little bit more rustic. I'm gonna go ahead and start creating this crumb layer look. It's visible um, on the bottom, and so I'm gonna try and make that a little bit more visible on the top layer as well. And by the way, this is how you hold an offset spatula, not like this. It was meant to be like this, so that it moves your hand away from the cake. This is gonna come as a shock to a lot of people, but I'm not really the best at frosting cakes. Now layer two goes over, and we repeat this process. And again, turn the turntable, and let it do the work for me. One more time. And my sprinkles, I'm gonna lie down delicately in the center. I'm gonna pick it up, and then, Fill the center of my cake with sprinkles. Frosting a cake, it's like a Bob Ross painting, you know? Like, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. And my final cake, we're gonna go on top. Saint Germain sugar syrup. I'm gonna try to put as much icing on top as I think I need to crumb coat the whole cake. Don't be afraid to be the boss of your cake. So this is gonna hang out in the freezer for about 15 minutes. It's gonna get nice and stable for me, so I'll be able to put my next coat of icing on and it won't move around. Thin layer on the side. But a little bit more icing this time. Pile it up pretty high on top. This time though, I want a thicker coating. And it's gonna look a little varied, but that's sort of the look I'm going for. I'm not trying to make it look Perfect. Perfection is for level three. Now I switch tools. It's flexible, and I just leave that here, and I spin my turntable, and it totally smooths itself. I don't have to work that hard. Same thing here, up against the side of the cake, and spin the cake. I'll have this really cute swirl in the middle. You know, if you don't leave a little bit of cake showing, people aren't gonna know that there's sprinkles inside, and that's really important. Now, my final touch to this cake is gonna to be to add a bunch of edible glitter. There's my cake ready for its final decoration. It's time to move beyond what you see and make it beautiful. My Mona Lisa. I have some of the frosting, and I have some chocolate that we're gonna shave on top, fancy. I can practice what it's gonna look like. Ooh, I like that. Let's start out with everybody's favorite rose. Like this, is this pretty? When you're decorating a cake, it's good to have flowers of different sizes. It adds visual interest, but it also helps you when you have little nooks and crannies where you need to hide something. I'm not doing any of those things. I'm gonna just try writing Happy Birthday Epicurious on here with a gel writing pen and then putting a bunch of sprinkles everywhere because I'm basically a child. <laughs> that one's kind of big, that's okay. It's fun. And I'm gonna pipe them bound of icing. It's gonna help me get some height. So I'm gonna start with my biggest flower, which is my hero flower. Wow, that is really not how you write a P. Some of my little flowers go in my nooks and crannies, and I'll add a few vines. This is level one flowers. I think for me, just using the star tip and sort of making these little ruffly roses is just all I need. Don't be afraid to overlap. Cute, how cute. I'm very happy with that. As you can see, I was obviously an art major in school. I think that using a dark chocolate bar is gonna bring out those flavors really nicely. Okay, cool, I think that's a perfect birthday cake and I have no questions. Um, I'm just gonna add some sprinkles all over it now. And that's it. How do I know when it's done? It's done. And this is my birthday cake. And this is my birthday cake. And this is a Penny Stankowitz birthday cake. All right, we have a 
birthday cake because it's Epicurious's birthday. What's any birthday cake without a couple candles? Happy birthday, Epicurious. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And now it's time to taste my cake. Now I'm ready. Ah. Are you ready for this? There's the magic. Let's eat some birthday cake. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Wow. I think that's mighty fine. <laughs> the cake is really moist. It's really nice and rich and chocolatey. And I feel like the peanut butter frosting is just so light and airy and fluffy and silky. The buttercream is like delicious. It's got just the right amount of salt. And I mean, look at those sprinkles. How can you say no to that? It's delicious. It's bright. It's light. The cake being a white cake makes the chocolate stand out even more. The Saint Germain has soaked in and has added this floraliness and it just tastes like joy. That's as good as my wedding cake. Of course, my wedding cake also came from a grocery store, but. <laughs> Birthday cake says celebration like no other dessert. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Emily made her vanilla birthday cake using a traditional creaming method. What I would call the basic cake making method. She creamed softened butter together with white crystalline sugar. This added volume because the sugar crystals make the pockets in the softened butter, allowing air to enter and lighten the mixture. Eggs are added to emulsify or hold the sugar and butter together in suspension. This ensures that the batter will hold the additional liquid and flour to make a delicious cake. Emily alternately added her dry and wet ingredients to the creamed mixture. This reduced the amount of mixing of the flour, decreasing gluten formation. Gabrielle used a combination of baking powder and soda. In this case, the baking powder does most of the leavening. The baking soda contributes to the leavening as well, while also neutralizing the acidic ingredients like the buttermilk and cocoa powder. This is a runny, loose batter, which will induce lots of steam to assist with leavening during baking and give the cake a higher domed top. Penny used what we call a reverse creaming method for mixing her birthday cake. With this method, softened butter is added directly to the dry flour and sugar mixture with some of the milk and egg mixture to initially moisten the batter. The idea is to coat the gluten proteins in the flour with fat from the butter, which modifies hydration of these proteins and thereby limits gluten development. The texture is like Emily's conventional cake, but slightly more delicate with an ever so spongy quality that really elevates Penny's cake to level three. It just bakes really evenly, nice and fluffy. Gabrielle made peanut butter Swiss meringue frosting. It's based on whipped egg whites, which contain proteins, some of which are attracted to water and some that are repelled. When you whip them and introduce air, the water-loving proteins cling to the water in the egg white, while the water-repelling proteins cling to the air. With extended whipping, more bubbles surrounded by proteins are formed and it fluffs right up. She mixed her egg whites with brown sugar, which is white sugar coated with molasses. So it has a darker color with a slight minerally tangy flavor profile. Gradually adding the butter in small amounts once the meringue cools is essential. Otherwise, you'll deflate your meringue and get a smooth, sweet, marshmallowy concoction that may taste good, but won't be thick enough to smoothly glide over your cake. It's delicious and silky and smooth. Penny made two types of royal icing buttercream for her beautiful level three four-tiered birthday cake. I make good cake. Typically, royal icing is a smooth, stiff, and very stable mixture of just egg whites and confectioner sugar. It's so stable because the proteins in the egg whites combine with the sugar and harden quickly, which means timing matters when you're working with royal icing. Penny added luxurious amounts of butter to give it shine and soften the texture a bit. Making a birthday cake is such a happy way to celebrate someone you love, or in this case, something we love. Happy birthday, Epicurious, and may you have many, many more.